Now, Poco smartphones often offer stupendous value for money. The M series in particular are some of the most affordable handsets out there. And the latest one is this bad boy right here, the Poco M5. This serves up similar specs to the older Poco M4 Pro 5G, just minus the 5G bit. Although this is one of the very first smartphones to pack in MediaTek's Helio G99 chipset, which apparently, allegedly, offers a very strong gaming performance for budget blowers. So is it all that and a bag of cheesy chips? Well, let's whip the Poco M5 on out of the box, take you on a full-on tour of the hardware and the software. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, what will you actually find in this excessively yellow box? Well, you've got yourself a Poco M5, of course, a relatively dinky power adapter, USB cable, very nice. And yes, you do have yourself a condom case bundled in there as well to wrap around your Poco M5, keep it nice and protected. And that's everything nice and simple, nothing particularly shocking or surprising in there. It's going to pause for a moment to once again appreciate the extreme yellowness of this box and then let's move on to the phone. So here is the Poco M5, a 6.58 inch, I was going to say beast, it's not really a beast at all, it's pretty standard, enormous size for 2022. It is quite heavy though and that's bollock over 200 grams, so you certainly feel it when it's stashed in your shorts. Like many smartphones in 2022, it's quite a flat finish. You've got a flat display and then quite flat edges as well, which I'm not a massive fan of. I do prefer a more curved design. It's more comfortable to clutch. And the bezels surrounding that display, not too chunky, although you do get a fairly fat lip down below. The display is protected by Gorilla Glass, but around back, of course, like pretty much every other budget blower out there, it is just a plastic finish. And like a couple of other Poco smartphones, you've got a two-tone finish here. You've got a kind of four leather back. When I say four leather, this thing ain't fooling anyone. It's clearly not leather. It's basically just plastic with a textured finish to it, kind of like an elephant's ball sack. But at least that does help with the grip. And then up top, it's a strip of glossy plastic holding the camera lens. And of course, you've got that Poco branding. Well, at least Poco's been reasonably restrained here on the M5 because sometimes that branding is literally stretched across the entire arse like some sort of hideous tattoo. And Poco is offering the M5 in a choice of three different colours, green, yellow or black, which of course is the most difficult of the three to actually capture on camera. But if you don't like bright poppy colours or joy in general, well, this is definitely the option for you. Now, like all Poco smartphones, what you've got here is Xiaomi's MIUI launcher, but in a more Pocified version. It's basically the same setup, drag down that notifications bar from anywhere on screen, sometimes first time, other times you just can't be asked, and the control center is the right hand side. Includes fast access to all your smart home gear if you use a bit of Google Home or whatever, and you've also got lots of other toggles to piddle about with. Google Discover Feeds, check. You've also got an apps tray to store all your goodies. And unfortunately, like all other MIUI devices, there is a hideous amount of crapware stacked on this thing. So you will spend a good bit of time when you first set it up, probably just going through uninstalling all the stuff that you don't want to free up some space. Never in my life have I played Tile Fun and never will I ever. You've got some pretty nifty tools served up by MIUI, such as the video toolbox, which allows you to, for instance, play back a YouTube video with the screen hibernating. This is pretty handy if you want to enjoy a podcast or vodcast or whatever while strutting down the street. You've also got that nifty game turbo menu, which can be dragged out at any point while you're in a game. This is absolutely rammed full of pretty helpful features, including some performance boosting tools. You can record the action, you can change your voice, and there's even a new timer feature on here if you're worried that you're spending far too much of your existence being murdered by school kids online. And yeah, in MIUI, you will spot the occasional bit of jank. For instance, sometimes when I drag down the control center, this smart device section just won't load because there's some sort of weird glitch. Of course, now that I've got the camera rolling, it's behaving like a proper little bloody boy scout. And also, if you're all about timely software and OS updates, you might want to look elsewhere because MIUI devices, they tend to lag behind quite a lot of rivals as far as those updates go. No real complaints on the security front. You've got an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor here on the Poco M5, which definitely does the job. It's a proper skinny wee bugger, but the only time it really feels is when your mitts are like really damp or really grabby. And you do actually have face unlock as a backup option as well. Be warned, however, if you're buying the base model of the Poco M5, you do just get a measly 64 gigs of storage. And I've only been using the Poco M5 for about, what, four days? And already, as you can see there, a massive chunk of that storage has been used already. However, there is a 128 gig model if you want to boost that storage. And the good news is you've also got space in here for a micro SD memory card if you want to boost that storage at any point. 
Now that 6.58 inch display here on the Poco M5 is pretty basic stuff. It's just IPS tech, of course, as you'd expect at this price point. It comes with the usual limitations. The viewing angles aren't exactly fantastic and on top brightness, it won't exactly burn your retinas. I could generally see what was going on when I took the phone outdoors, even when the sun was actually cutting through the clouds, but sometimes it did involve a wee bit of squinting. Got a full HD plus resolution, 24 8 by 1080 pixels and you know, reasonably crisp given the size of this thing. Vibrant colours don't exactly pop off the screen and slap you in the face, but they're not dull or lifeless either. And when you go full screen, there's only a very subtle little nipple notch up top poking its way into the proceedings, so not much of an issue at all. If you head on into the Poco M5's display settings, you'll see the refresh rate is set to 60Hz by default, but you can boost that up to 90Hz at any point if you do want a smoother finish. And I would highly recommend doing so, especially as the battery life on the Poco M5 is ruddy marvellous anyway. And when you chuck it on the 90Hz setting, it is a dynamic refresh rate anyway, so it will scale down to 60Hz when you're not using a supported app. So I really don't know why that's not just set on by default. And when you're kicking back with a YouTube video of your favourite bold twat, you do have a simple mono speaker set up for your audio, pumped out of this teeny wee grill stuffed away on the bottom edge here. And does that mean the audio is a bit balls? I hear you cry. Well, let's boost up the volume, check it out. Oh, I've got to say, the only time I've ever been on a sailboat, I spent most of that time emptying my insides straight into the sea. So yes, as you can hopefully pick up there, uh, quite a tinny speaker, unfortunately, the audio quality not the best, shall we say, and of course it's just popped out that bottom edge so it's rather imbalanced as well. And it's absolutely fine if you are just enjoying a bit of YouTube in a quiet-ish environment, but otherwise you'll want to get some headphones on the go. So good news therefore that you do actually get a 3.5mm headphone jack tucked away here on the top edge of the Poco M5. And if you want to go wireless instead, you do actually have full Bluetooth 5.3 streaming support here on the Poco M5. And that worked a treat, apart from the fact that the overall volume was quite low when streaming to my headphones, so I had to jack it all the way up to the maximum levels to really enjoy my tunes. Now, as I already mentioned, we're back at the very beginning of this chuffing lovely video. The Poco M5 is one of the very first smartphones to rock a MediaTek Helio G99 chipset. And this is a 4G platform with apparently an emphasis on gaming, and that's backed here by your choice of 4 or 6 gigs of RAM. And yeah, this smartphone does still feel a little bit sluggish at times, especially if you're skipping around using multiple apps at the same time. But you know what? It'll suit most people absolutely fine. Just don't expect a silky smooth experience and all is well. And you can do a bit of light gaming on this thing as well as promised. The likes of Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, stuff like that play absolutely fine. Although Call of Duty Mobile only supported lower graphic settings, but it did at least maintain a smooth frame rate. And the Poco M5 certainly didn't heat up under duress or anything like that. So you can game away all afternoon long if that's your bag. The screen was reasonably sensitive and everything got those game turbo tools, of course, to help out. I still died over and over and over a frickin' again. No doubt at the hands of those bloody kids with their stupid youthful reactions and far too much time on their hands. But whatever, I kind of put up a fight. And sadly, the Poco M5 does not support 5G connectivity, but I found the LTE was all right. I generally found I had quite a weak signal sometimes when I went indoors. But apart from that, not too bad. However, where the Poco M5 really excels is the battery life. You've got a 5,000 milliamp hour capacity cell crammed into that lovely plastic chassis, and this more than does the job, coupled with the energy efficient MediaTek chipset. So I found that even with plenty of screen on time, I would generally get to the end of quite a long intensive day and still have about a third of that battery capacity remain and still plenty of juice in the tank. And if you were kind of restrained with your usage, well, you'll be able to make it through a full weekend without charging the Poco M5 once. Of course, not particularly exciting when it comes to actually recharging the bugger. You've got 18 watt wide charging support, which isn't terribly lethargic or anything. It's absolutely fine, does the job. No wireless charging support, of course, but that's incredibly rare to find at this price point. If you want that for under 200 quid, you'll definitely have to just invest in a really old flagship phone. And let's finish off this Poco M5 unboxing and review with a squint at that camera tech. And like quite a lot of smartphones these days, you've got a 50 megapixel primary camera sensor for your everyday shots. It's your standard MIUI camera app, so absolutely packed with features and tools and various bits. One of the only bollocks is that HDR seems to knock itself off every time, so you have to turn that on if you want it. And that 50 meg primary camera is pretty solid for a basic budget blower like the Poco M5. Even with tricky contrast to overcome, this phone can generally pump out some good looking shots. Not the oversaturated washed out pics I was expecting. Poppy colours in particular really shine, even if they don't quite match what you'll see in real life. 
And of course, move into more ambient lighting and you'll immediately notice a drop in the picture quality with much softer, noisier images. Although these can at least be sharpened up by sticking on the night mode and keeping your hands super steady. Not ideal if you've had a skin full, of course, as your night snaps will usually just come out a bit blurry, unless you happen to be lugging around a tripod in your pants. However, while it is a triple lens setup slapped around the back of the Poco M5, those other two lenses are your basic depth and macro shooters. There's no ultra wide angle option on here. For your video, you can shoot full HD resolution footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second. There's bugger all 4K support here. That means your whole movies won't look too sharp, although a bigger concern is the absolutely balls image stabilization. You definitely won't want to move around as you record, otherwise the results will be puke-inducingly juddery. An audio capture is alright, but on the whole this is best used for basic shareable clips. And then you've got all of the other modes you would expect, including like a bit of portrait action, of course. Pretty much obligatory. And then if you tap more, you've got a few other bits in there. You can actually shoot at the full-on 50 meg resolution if you want. And if you skim all the way to this side, you do have a dedicated pro mode as well. And last up, the Poco M5's 5 meg selfie snapper ain't too bad, considering the low megapixel count. Brighter backgrounds are usually bleached out, but the M5 can usually keep your face at an acceptable exposure level, unless you're stood in direct sunlight. And my selfie pics went too soft unless things once again got quite dim. And if you would like to shoot some video using the Poco M5's front facing camera, you could do that at full HD resolution. And uh, you know, the video pickup's fine, obviously struggles a little bit in dimmer light and not stronger light, but uh, it's not too shabby for your vlogging needs. And uh, the audio pickup's pretty good, even when there's lots of noise going on, uh, such as a big spurty fountain. And there you have it, my lovelies. That, in a nutshell, is my full unboxing and review of the Poco M5, a perfectly respectable budget blower that'll cost you under 200 quid. And yeah, the performance is absolutely fine, as long as you don't mind the occasional little judder and stumble. The battery life is fantastic. Occasional bit of jank from the software, and of course, the IPS display is limited. But overall, it is solid value for money, like old Poco blowers, really. Anyway, that's what I reckon. What do you guys think of the Poco M5? Be great to your thoughts down below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a really wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.